tools are fast, accurate, and safe when properly used. Now, we've used hand tools long enough to build habits of caring for them, of using them safely. The same habits of care and safety are even more important with power-driven tools. First of all, let's see what safeguards our shop provides. Notice that there's ample space for each power tool. Each one is set apart by marking on the floor. Only the operator or an authorized helper may enter this area. Most machines are equipped with guards to help keep fingers away from the sharp tools. There are waste cans and brushes so they're kept clean and free of hazards. Materials are stored neatly out of the work area and flammable liquids are stored in safety containers away from open flames. All these safeguards and many more are provided in the shop. But they alone will not guarantee safety. That depends on what we do. How should we prepare ourselves? Partly in the clothing we wear for shop work. Husky leather shoes help protect the feet against dropped tools or materials. Clothes that are comfortably loose give you freedom of movement. Sleeves should be short or rolled up above the elbows. Avoid dangling neckties that might get caught in the machine. Yes, the clothing you wear can help you keep safe in the shop. There are other ways to prepare yourself. You will want to review the instructions for the machine and operation you're going to perform. You will do your share toward keeping the shop neat the machines brushed off, the floor clear of scraps, the aisles open for traffic. You'll build the habit of staying outside the restricted areas about each machine, except when you're actually using the machine. Finally, you'll learn the skills of operating each machine safely. Here is the grinder used for keeping tools sharp. Set the tool rest close to the wheel no more than a sixteenth of an inch away. Be sure the grinding wheel is properly guarded. A glass shield is good eye protection. And you may want to wear goggles for extra protection. Stand aside when you start the wheel, just in case it's defective. Now hold the tool firmly in both hands and ease it against the wheel. Don't crowd the wheel. Try to use the whole width of the wheel to prevent grooving it. See the sparks fly? You'll be glad your eyes are protected. You'll be glad you know how to use the grinder safely. How is your skill with a circular saw? See what you can learn here. We're going to make a rip or lengthwise cut. Is this the proper blade for ripping? right. This type blade is set so that it will project one-eighth to one-fourth inch above the board. For ripping, use the fence to guide your work, checking it with the parallel grooves on the table. Make sure the guard is down over the blade. Now you're ready to turn on the motor. Set your feet so you stand with good balance and out of the line of the board in case it should kick back. Now ease the board along, keeping it snugly against the fence, but not rushing it past the blade. As you near the end of the cut, make sure you keep your fingers well away from the blade. Turn the motor off before you do anything else. But now, suppose you have to rip a narrow piece off a board. Set the guard up 
out of the way. Use the fence as before. But there isn't much room between the fence and the saw blade. What now? Watch and see. Once the cut is well started, use a pusher stick and easily push the work through without bringing your fingers near the blade. Now, shut off the motor and wait till the blade stops. Run the blade all the way down. That's the safe way to leave it. Brush off the sawdust. Put the guard down for added safety. Well, how is your skill with the circular saw? Could you do that well, safely? What about the band saw? Suppose you wanted to cut an ornamental curve. Make sure the saw is not running. Adjust the upper saw guide to slightly more than the thickness of your work. Check other adjustments. Measure the blade to make sure it will take the curves you plan to cut. Review your notes. Also, some band saws have this information in chart form on the machine. Feed your work slowly, never crowding the blade. Take it especially easy on the sharper turns. If the saw should bind, Turn off the power and wait till the blade stops before backing up the work. Keep your mind and your eyes on the work. Keep your fingers clear of the blade and all will go well. Next, let's have a look at the drill press. See if you can figure out the safe way to produce accurate holes fast. What's the cap for? Do your shop rules require a cap to keep your hair away from the revolving parts? Note that the work is clamped securely to the table. Do you know why there's an extra board underneath? Bring the drill down slowly and easily. Don't force it through. Then ease up as the drill is about to break through. And there you are. Fast, accurate work done safely. Other machines in our shop help us and need to be used with care. When you use the jointer, be sure to use the protecting guard. And when you're planing, the pusher should be used as a safety measure. A disc sander is used for shaping and finishing operations. But let the sander do the work. Don't crowd too closely. And work on the downward side of the disc. Of course, we still use our hand tools, too. Keeping them clean, storing them neatly, helps keep them in good condition. Well, are you ready to work safely? Remember, our shop is equipped with useful tools and with safeguards to help us use them safely. We come to the shop properly clothed, safety conscious, and instructed in the safe way to use tools. The end result of skillful work is such pleasing and useful products as these, made the right way, which is the safe way and the best way. <laughs>